must be. Elsie Tanner. Of course. And you're Susie. We spoke on the phone. Oh, we did, didn't we? And how's me only daughter on her big day? Bloomy by the look of it. All right. No need to ask how you are. Oh, I'm fine, love, as ever. I'm looking forward to tonight, though. Have you got a fella for me? Uh, we'll have to see what we can do, won't we, Gail? Hello, and welcome to the Coronation Street Collection, a video library featuring the best of street history. That was how Audrey introduced herself to the street in 1979. She was at that time Audrey Potter, but it wasn't long before she became Audrey Roberts, and it's Alf and Audrey Roberts that we're going to be looking at in this edition of the Coronation Street Time Life videos. Her arrival coincided with Alf's departure on holiday, and he was in desperate need of someone to look after the shop in his absence. Audrey needed a job, so it seemed sensible for them to help each other out. So we're not going back to that tame gorilla then? Let's just say that when he left, we were in total agreement. He agreed to go his way, I agreed to go mine. Good. Well, let's hope for you yet then. What we're going to do with you, though, any road up? Well, I don't know, do I? At least Elsie says I can stay with her for a bit, so at least I've got a roof over me. And next, I suppose I'll have to find a job. Hey, are you looking for work? Oh, that's right, lovey. Steeplejack, mud wrestler, you name it, I am open to offer. So if you hear of anything. I, uh, I might be able to help you, actually. You? Yeah, well, I'm, uh, I'm looking for somebody myself, you see. What, in the shop? Yeah, well, I'm hopefully going away on holiday, and I've only got the other part-time, you see, so I'll need somebody in the shop. Would you be interested? Interested? Oh, Alf, you've saved me life. Well, when could you start? Ooh. Could you give me ten minutes to finish my drink? <laughs> yes. Hello. Hello. Oh, I looked. I wouldn't have put you down as an early starter where drink is concerned. <laughs> early starter, early finisher, actually. Oh, <laughs> Let me buy you one. Thank you very much. Uh, I won't say no to a gin, please. Oh, and a tonic? Yes, please. Okay, Deirdre's a bit off colour, isn't she? Oh, yeah, she looks ever so peaky. She popped in this morning, but I says I could manage a shop by myself. It's unfortunate, with Alf being away. Oh, well, what I can do, I will. What I can't, I won't. I mean, come on, it's only a tatty little corner shop when all's said and done. There's no point in killing yourself over it. No, I suppose not. I'm supposed to be open now, as a matter of fact, but honestly, enough is enough. I think I'll take root if I stand behind that counter much longer today. That's 90 feet. And uh, will you join us, Betty? Oh, thank you. Art is kind of you. Thank you. Cheers. You arrived back last night, actually, from Scarborough. Not that you'd know, so look at it. Then I suppose he did go a bit towards the back end for sunbathing. He brought me a little prezzy back and all, didn't he? Oh, very nice. And he says I can stay on here pro ten till Deirdre's back on her feet again. Ta. Good morning, Fred. Oh, I'll pass things. Oh, all right, Alf. Now that a few grand won't put right. <laughs> Everything all right over at the community centre? Oh, yeah, I've got it well cracked over there, Alf. Yeah, well, I'm not sorry to be back, I'll tell you. I mean, holidays is all right, you know, very nice. But when you've got a business... Oh, uh, took your woods, did you? Go to Scarborough. I always take my woods, don't I? Yeah. Move myself a few, Bob and all. You know, got a few jackheaders in. <laughs> Mind you, as I say, I'm glad to be back. Not that I seem to have been missed much. Oh. Things are going very smoothly. <laughs> You've no complaints, have you? Complaints, mate. I've no complaints, Alf. See, Alf. Ah, ta-da. Total pet. Ta-da, love it. I bet he was in first thing every day for his loaf, closely followed by Fairclough. <laughs> by heck, I wish I could bottle that smile and shove it in the window. Alf, come on, you'll have me blushing. No, I was born of this fellow, though, you know. Yeah. I got him on a short bias and uh, plain thumb bias, you know. And I told him I got this shop. And he said, well, how can you be here, leaving your shop at a time like this with trade as it is? I can leave it, I said, because I know it's in good hands. Oh, I enjoy it every minute, honestly. <laughs> yeah, well, brew up, eh, and we'll go through books. <laughs> oh, oh, you'll be snatching this back when we've seen the books, I bet. Get away. <laughs> Morning, Bert. Morning, now. A large slice loaf, please. Hiya, Bert. I know, love, you still here, then. Yeah. Well, of course she is. Do you know, I'd sooner sell this counter than get rid of Audrey. She's like a tonic, is that, lass? She's better than all them sea breezes. Yeah, she's quite a girl, isn't she? Yeah. She was uh, telling me about your Brian's bit of bother, though. Oh, yeah, that. Well, it never rains but what it pours, does it, Alf? Mind you, we've managed to get him a solicitor. He's going round there today, so we're just keeping his fingers crossed, you know what I mean? Yeah. Right, 38, innit? That's Thanks right, much. Ta-da. See you. Bye-bye. You take sugar, don't you, love? Well, I like it very sweet, so uh, why don't you just stir it with your little finger? Oh. <laughs> Taking's down, are they? Down a bit, aye. Well, I knew they'd be down. I mean, what with Deirdre only being able to do an hour here and there, it meant I had to close for lunch. Then, well, if I wanted to, uh, you know, powder my nose, well, it meant leaving the shop lest I closed up. Yeah, well, not to worry, Lord. 
You're open. Well, it says sort of door, doesn't it, love? Yes, it does, but I called once or twice last week and the open sign said open, but when I tried the door, in actual fact, you were closed. Oh, that sign defeats me. <laughs> well, I think it was Friday I came and the sign said closed, and I thought, oh, my, no tea, no sugar, no bread. Trudged off to Mrs Battersby's, met Mrs Walker coming back from here with her loaf and everything, and she said, well, it may say closed, but I assure you they're open. <laughs> That reminds me of that joke, you know, about that man who got on the bus. He said to the conductor, does this bus go to town? And the conductor said, no. It's real cheeky, conductor, you know. And the fella said, well, it says town on the front. And the conductor said... Well, it says typhoon tea on the back, but we're not going to China. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't typhoon tea come from in Ceylon? Hey, do you remember them buses that used to say duplicate on the back, you know? Dozens of buses, you <laughs> duplicate, duplicate. You never knew what they were duplicating. <laughs> There was a fellow in the bus stop once he said to me, I don't know where duplicate is, but they've got a right good bus service. <laughs> <laughs> Usual brown slice, is it? Yes, uh, plus my order, and uh, if you could pop it round. Oh, aye, she's missed me popping round, you see. Oh, yeah. Well, one does get used to good service, but I'd hardly put it as strongly as it's What can we do for you, Mrs Ogden? Uh, half a middle cup, please, and make sure it is half and half. Well, the scales are there, Hilda. Oh, I know they're there, and don't worry, I'm watching them. Mm. I, am. Um, I wondered whether it was all right just uh, coming in like. Wondered whether I might have to ring and make an appointment. Now, you have to make allowances, you know. I am entitled to a holiday, and it's very difficult getting reliable staff these days. Mm. Hey, what happened last Thursday? We only took £3.84. Uh, uh, half a pound, was it, Mrs Ogden? Yeah. Well, I think that's just about dead on the mark, wouldn't you say? You've come in here to tell me you're not coming in again. Well, that they might come in for the odd thing. And that will not have it in stock. But when it comes to me orders, I'm going somewhere else. Well, there's only Sissy Battersby does orders. Well, that's just where I'm going. Well, are you sure, Albert? Because they'll not deliver, you know. I know what the Battersby will do, and I know what they won't do. This is all aimed at me and Tip, Mr Tatlock. Aye, I happen mean, it is. Well, look, if you've got a moan, No, Albert... no, all I mean to say is the beauty parlour might shoot some folk. But when it comes to slicing bacon, they make a mock of it. They're subtle with it, isn't they? You've never been in for bacon. You've never been in for bacon. Never been in? Well, I could get the machine. Never mind a blooming bacon. What do you mean? Well, you're in there, gassing and listening to the wireless play, and they can't see who comes into the shop. Listen, Albert, you can't always hear when you're through there. All you had to do was shout. Well, I don't fancy coming to the shops and shouting. Yeah, well, if you feel like taking your orders to Sissy Battersby, and you don't mind the walk, feel free to do so. Right, well, that's just what I'm going to. I want to advise other folks that are the same. Well, you'll find she's pricey. I mean, I used to shop there. There was one bob on this, two bob on the other. Mm, well, that's it, isn't it? I mean, if Albert's gone, I mean, if he's going somewhere else, that's the end of the road. That's bankruptcy. There's only the river left. Eh? Hey? I'm kidding, aren't I? We've oh. not lost Albert. In our one week of her price, he'll be back here naturally us. It was obvious that Alf had taken a fancy to Audrey, and no amount of criticism from Albert, or anyone else for that matter, was going to make the slightest difference. From then on, Audrey had more and more influence on Alf's life, even down to the choice of what sort of car he should have next. The other residents of the street could see where all this was leading, even if Alf or Audrey couldn't. Well, it'll have to be a quick one. I mean, we've left Deirdre at the shop. Come on, a very capable girl is Deirdre. How do you? Us again. Mm -hmm. A pint and a gin and tonic. He had a nice drive from the other end of the street. Oh, he hasn't got a car yet. He's still making up his mind. Yeah, I must say the news gets round here very quick, doesn't it? It's now we don't get to know about in here. Do you know, we knew that the Russians were going to invade Afghanistan a week before it happened. <laughs> Nobody would believe us. So, yeah. Hello, Al. Hello. Hello, Hello Annie. I believe you're going to buy a car. Or perhaps you already have. Uh, well, not quite. <laughs> Do you know, there were two that I fancied. One was a sports car. It, what make were that? MGB. An MGB. Oh, you know, it was all moonlight and roses, that sort of thing. Oh, yeah. Then there were another one that had been um, customised. You know, it had all sorts of daft bits added to it. It had been painted up. You'd never seen such a monstrosity. Oh, pictures of surfing all <laughs> over it. You could drive through Sof and think you're in California. Oh, so what's it to be then, Alf? Sports or customised? Well, I've... Uh... Oh, they're a marina estate, he fancy. Oh, yeah, well, I've not made my mind up yet. All I said was that the estate would be very useful for the shop, that's all. Well, that's certainly a consideration. Oh, but you want a car that's going to give you a bit of excitement, don't you? Oh, there's no point in asking me, Audrey. The nearest I've been to a car this year, bloke offered to take me home on his bus pass. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you find something you like. Ah, well, I'll have to think about it and uh, I can go back this afternoon, eh? I can just see you, you know, in a car like that. It'd do wonders for your image in MGB. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sit yourself down, love. Oh, 
Sorry. Thank you. You're not coming to your head, don't have you? <laughs> no, but my coming round has to do with Mrs. Potter. Oh? After. I don't relish having to say this, but I can't sit idly by while people are talking. People talking about what? The influence that Mrs. Potter seems to have over you. Oh. Now, Alf, believe me, I have nothing against the woman personally. I hardly know her, and she seems quite a good-hearted sort of person. Well, I'm glad to hear that. But the things people are saying and the impression they get... Yeah, I can guess at it. Well, first of all, there were the erratic times in the shop. Then the hairdressing, and now she appears to be dictating to you about your motor car. Yeah, advising. She's advising me about the car. Not very practical advice, Alf. Quite, forgive me for saying this, but quite in keeping with her attitude to life. Yes, well, you've been very blunt with me, Annie, and I appreciate it. Now, just let me say this. You know what it's like when you're by yourself and you find somebody who can keep things ticking over for you. Yes, indeed. Never mind the shop wasn't open all the hours that people thought it should be. I was very grateful. Of course. Yeah, I don't see I have any cause to, well, apologise. Certainly not to me. You see, I like Audrey. I think she's a lot of fun. She makes me laugh. As a matter of fact, she makes me feel younger. And if some folk think that makes me look a bit foolish, well, good luck to them. Nobody's ever said you look foolish. Well, whatever. Reenie always liked her, you know. She liked Mrs Potter. Oh, yes. She thought she was, you know, a bit of fun. You could meet Alf in the middle of the Sahara Desert riding a camel. You'd still know he were a grocer. It's funny how fellas run true to type, don't you find that? Yeah, too many of them run true to the same type for my liking. No, but they do. Take reps, for instance. You can tell reps a mile off. Yep. Mind you, they do know how to give you a good time, reps. I'll say that for them. Mm. From uh, what I've heard, you could do a lot worse than a grocer. Oh, yes, if it's only a pound of apples you're after. <laughs> No, Alf is all right. I mean, you couldn't want to be treated better. Mind you, I might say different if he buys that estate. Oh, so you're not thinking of spending the rest of your life behind a shop counter? Oh, well, so come on, don't start asking me questions like that. I shall come over all dizzy the rest of my life. It'd be breaking the habit of a lifetime for me to think beyond next week. Mm, yes, well, he might be, though. What? Thinking beyond next week? Yeah. What do you think he is? Well, I know Alf, and he's not exactly a playboy type. No, he, uh, he's the type that's always got one eye on the future. Well, would you fancy him? I mean, be honest, Elsie, would you? You mean, as a long-term investment? Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't think I would. Well, me neither. <laughs> oh, do you know, there's nothing more annoying, is there, than fellas getting all serious when you're having a good time? <laughs> no, but you know what I mean. I'll tell you what's more annoying. When the good time stops and then you find they weren't serious at all. <laughs> But, I mean, you know, all you're looking for is a bit of company, a night out, you know. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, they start talking about leaving their wives. I mean, you get this vision of them arriving the next morning on your doorstep with an armful of washing. That's <laughs> <laughs> you right. <laughs> oh, no. That's all right for a bit of fun, but... Oof. In spite of all the advice, Alf listened to Audrey and bought the car she liked. And that was the start of it. And it was only a matter of time before he popped the question. As a matter of fact, it was the car that finally brought them together. Audrey had borrowed it to visit a friend in Birmingham, and when she brought it back, Alf was not too pleased. <laughs> I see what you mean. It's a cracker, that, isn't it? It's what they call a Rolls Canardi, this, you know. Rolls down hills and Canardi roll up again. <laughs> Like you didn't just get it because it was the one I liked, did you? No, no, it was the obvious choice, oh. wasn't it? I mean, I fancied a bit of a change, and it'd be dead easy to park. It'll cost you a pop or two, you know, this, Alf. Drink petrol, these do. Might be a bit cheaper if you just chartered a helicopter. Mm. <laughs> Shall I take you for a little spin off? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there's all that matter, you know, Alf, you know, the tax and the insurance, all that. Why, I can't you need a shoe on to get in there, lad. Sort of well. Ta da. You'll get no peace in that, Len, you know, a flashy job like that. Uh, It'll attract the fuzz like flies. They'll be breathalyzing them every 500 yards, they will. Hey, Fred. What's that? It's a lovely car, isn't it? Oh, it's lovely. Bloody lovely, Len. Hey. 
Audrey's not so bad either. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any cornflour, Al? Uh, cornflour, yes, love. It's, it's just over there. You can't miss it. Near the vinegar. Hello, love. Al, there's something I have to tell you. Oh, yeah. Uh, have you found it? No. I think you better come outside just for a minute. Just a minute, love. Hang on. I'm just dealing with a customer. Oh, I found oh, it. Great. It is very important. Yeah, well, it can't be as important as the customer, love. Whatever it is. I mean, nothing is more important than the customer. <laughs> Hello. Oh. That's the lot. Right, well, that's uh, 448 then, please, love. Five pounds. Yep. Yeah. 52 change. Thank Start. you very much. Can that's you manage, lovely, love? Alba. Can, yes, that's lovely. Thank Call you. again, won't you? I certainly will. Bye. Yes. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> He didn't mind me telling you that, did you? You know, I mean, I can't just drop everything when I've got a customer. I mean, customers are my business, after all, you know, without the customer, nothing. Anyway, what was it about? I think you better come outside. Oh, hey, you brought the car back, have you? Because I needed to make some deliveries. Yeah, yes, I brought it back. Um, well, that's what I want to tell you. What? Well, um, I think I'd better show you. <laughs> I don't know you ladies. You love surprises, don't you? <laughs> now, what is all this about? I thought you said you had it cleaned. It still looks mucky. Well, the thing is, you see, I've, um, I've had a bit of a bump. Oh, yeah. Well, what? A bump? What? What happened? Well, there were this bollard, oh, you see. Oh, look at the light and the bu Oh, blimey. It's not as bad as it looks, Al. Not as bad. Flaming hell. Audrey. You swore to me you'd take care of that car. Well, I did. Oh, right, it looks like it, doesn't it? You not only smash it up, you tell blummy lies about it and all. I knew you'd be upset. Upset? I've got every right to be upset, under. I must walk my blooming head feeling lending in the car in the first place. And all them lies. It's been a right eye opener to me, has this? Getting the car valeted, getting it filleted more like. And you be like this. And I'm sorry. Well, crying's not gonna help, is it? No, I can't help it. Well, oh, never mind about all that. Oh, come on, don't cry. I just wanted to die. I, I knew how much you love that little car. It's not a matter of the car, is it? It's a, oh, come on, don't cry. Oh, I'm a swine making you cry like this. No, no, you do right. No, no, it's me. I'm a swine. I shouldn't have never... I wouldn't make you cry for a, for a gold clock, you know that. I'm sorry. No, it's me that should be sorry off, and I am. No, nee, no, you, you're too pretty to let the old looks be spoilt with tears. Oh, well. Come on, love. <laughs> I'm sorry, really. Look, it do not matter, really. I mean, it's only a flipping car when all's said and done. I know, but I wouldn't upset you, not for the world. Hey, lass. Look off. Yeah, you look beautiful, lass. I've always thought that, you know. You're a beautiful woman. Oh. I better get myself cleaned up if someone should come in and see me looking at you. They won't. <coughs> well, what are you doing? What about your customers? Jigger them. Listen, we're more important than customers. But you said. Oh, well, I say a lot of daft things, don't I? Hey, hang on. <sighs> come on, love. Come on upstairs. Nay, it'll be right. We're shot! Oh, good. Oh, 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 oh. Come on in. I uh, hope I'm not too much of a shock. Like. <laughs> Don't be tough. Well, I mean, I, I, I know we said we meet in, in shop like, but it could have been a bit awkward. Oh, uh, there's nobody here. No, no, they've all gone. Oh. Well, sit down. <coughs> oh, uh, Brian's still trying to get them parts for your car. Oh, right. Well. Well, Audrey, it's about last night. I mean, I realise that you might have thought I was just speaking in the heat of the moment, you know. But I want you to know I meant every word I said. I would very much like you to marry me. But, uh, well, I'll understand if you want to reconsider your answer. Oh, wow. You do? No, no, I don't want to reconsider. I don't do I heck as like. Hey, come here. <laughs> and he has me frightened to death you're going to change your mind. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, last night it was a, 
A bit hectic, wasn't it? It was lovely. Oh, aye, right. well, that's an old, yeah. yeah. But this morning, though, you know, <laughs> I was up at six o'clock. What? Yeah, well, I didn't know where I was. I didn't know what to do with myself. Oh, ow. <laughs> oh, <clears throat> there's one other thing, in case it crossed your mind. What? Well, you do know that I, uh, I proposed to Rita Furkler a while back. Yeah. Well, I don't want you going thinking that you're like, well, second choice. Do you know, it never crossed my mind. Because she did me the best favour anybody's ever done me, turning me down. It's a favour one or two fellas have done for me in the past and all, so I'm not likely to think out about that. Well, just in case it had crossed your mind. <laughs> isn't life wonderful? Oh, isn't it? Yes. yes. Oh, are you positive? Yes. It certainly suits, madam. I don't want out too flashy. Well, do you prefer that one? No, no, no. No, it's far too much. No, I'm just having a last look now. Put them away, for goodness sake. It's a very attractive ring. Yes, it is. Yeah, well, never mind putting them away. Let's, let's see what it looks like on. Oh. It's that bossy. I can see my life's not going to be my own. <laughs> it's a diamond cluster set in 18 karat gold. Oh, yes. Oh, Luke. Yeah, well, uh, that's it then. We'll, uh, we'll take that one. No, Alf, no, you can't. I won't let you. Yes, we'll, we'll have that one. Thank you. Oh. Right, sir. How would you care to pay? Oh, cash. Oh, thank you, Al. That's the one you wanted. That's the one you shall have. Well, I suppose it's an investment, isn't it? I mean, it's not like money thrown away. Oh, no, no. Um, <clears throat> is it all right to pay by cheque? Of course. <laughs> There's a few in. Are you going to make an announcement? Oh, no, I think we'll wait till the note is in. hope they don't take too long about it. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hi. Hello. 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 Oh, I think I'll just chip this nail. Oh, yes, oh, yeah. But, uh, never mind. Some of the time I always do. Uh, I'll, I'll get that, Jack, and, and uh, can we have drinks all round, if you don't mind, Bet? Because Audrey and I would like you to join us in a bit of a celebration. Oh, wait, let's have a look at your ring. <gasps> oh, 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 very good. No, you see, uh, Audrey and me are engaged to be married. Yes. Oh, 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 I won't for oh, another, please. And, uh, I won't for my, uh, I won't for Susan. Um, You're a dark horse, you are. Congratulations, Oh, thank you, Mike. My tail is Tilda. Yes, please. Oh, You're not dancing on tables, then? I'm in the wrong bit. Well, she's been engaged oh, often enough, hasn't she? <laughs> He's got the hardest bit to come yet. That's right, yes. And nobody else turned up? Well, two fellas just went in. One on the fat side, the other one smaller. A bit fanciful. Oh, just because he smiled at you. Well, they don't <laughs> at all, do they? <laughs> yes, uh, that sounds like that. Hey, which one's she married? Well, I won't spoil the surprise. I'll let you find out for yourselves. If she turns up. Hey, she's here! Hey! Now that they were married, the next thing to do was to find somewhere to live. Alf faced a little bit of opposition there, but Audrey eventually agreed to move into number 11, Coronation Street, for the time being. Right. I'd uh, better get on with your shopping or the boss will be chucking me out for gossiping to his staff. Oh, Alf doesn't mind me having a bit of a chin wag, do you, love? No, no, of course not. Oh, well, Bet does as I know to me cost. Oh, dear. <laughs> uh, that was the estate agent. Estate agent. Oh, yeah? Yeah, they reckon they've had another offer for number 11. I reckon it's getting very sought after, that place. If it's true what they say. What do you mean? Well, they could be having us on just to buy it. Well, as they're not interested, they're wasting yeah, their well, time. Well, oi, oi, I am interested. It's a very good little house, is that? And it's near the shop, and it's a price we can afford. Alfie, if we only ever bought things we could afford, the world would come to a halt. It'd be like the 1930s. Oh. It's debt what makes us well off. Come on, lovely. You know I'm right, don't you, eh? Uh, you're a long time dead, Alpha. Right, thanks, Alpha. See ya. Okay, bye. Oh, Alpha. Do you like this? I got it in a sale in Dorothy White. <laughs> Don't worry, it were only cheap. It's very nice. I've got to come completely clean there. I've got a dinky little nighty as well. Black. Oh. Mm, did you? Oh, come on, Alpha. Now stop sulking. Doesn't suit you. 
Doesn't suit me either. Just because I want something better than a house in Carnegie. I bought it. You bought what? Number 11. You haven't. I have. I closed the deal at dinner time. Well, you better go and unbuy it then, hadn't you? Because if you think no, I'm just a minute, then... No, Alfie. Alf, no, I no way. I said just a minute. <laughs> I bought number 11 because it's a good idea. It's, a, it's handy for the shop. It's a good little house. And we can make a very nice home of it. Now, I'm not saying we're going to live there forever, you know. Just until we can afford something better. One step at a time. That's the way I am. And before you say anything else, it is a home I'm offering you. It's the best I can manage at the moment. Now, I can't say fairer than that. Well, if you put it like that, I can't argue, can I? I just think you should have consulted me before you... Well, if it's only a stopgap. I knew you'd see it my way sooner or later. You see, I'm the man of the house. I've got the brain box. Mm. Well, what's done's done, eh? Well, I haven't done yet, have I? Hmm? Well, look, if we are going to see ourselves better off, you know, sooner or later, it would help if you had a little job. A job? You're a trained hairdresser, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, well, we make the front room down there into a hairdressing salon for you. I think you'd do very well. I mean, for one thing, you'd have the factory just across the road, wouldn't you? We'd both be in business then, working for one another. Working for one another? That's right. Oh, well, uh... Your brain box has been very, very busy, hasn't it? Oh, I'm a genius when I start, you know, especially when it comes to making money. Alfredo, I thought my genius was supposed to be spending it. Come on, come on. Do me best, love. Morning, Mrs. Roberts. Morning. Here we are with your favourite piece of furniture. What are you insinuating? Nothing. We don't know how to insinuate, do we, Curly? No, we're just a couple of humble, ignorant workmen. Right, then, get up them stairs. <laughs> oh, you've got really dirty minds, you two, honestly. Hello, lovey. How's it going? Oh, all right. Apart from the cheeky work for us, really? eh? Is that a king-size mattress? Yeah. Very sexy. Don't encourage them, Gail, please. <laughs> oh, hey, well, your carpet looks nice and bright. Yeah, it needs somewhat to brighten this place up. Oh. It's not what I wanted, Gail. Number 11, Coronation Street. I had thought of summit. Well, summit with a lounge. With the sun shining through the window. And a nice little cherry tree and blossom at the bottom of the garden. I don't doubt for one minute that it won't all come in the course of time. Do you think so? That is, if you stay the course, of course. Don't you think I will, or summit? Well, to cross my mind. Well, I'm going to prove you wrong, aren't I, dearest daughter? Despite this temporary hiccup in my grand design. Well, I hope so, because I've never seen you looking better. I've never felt better at all. Do you know, there's something to be said for marrying a grocer. You're never short of a square meal. <laughs> no, seriously. I think Alf's very good for me. He's really very appreciative. And that's very good for a girl's ego. <laughs> Alf's money-making scheme of running a hairdressing salon in the front room turned out to be more bother than it was worth, and eventually he decided that it should be closed down. Audrey, who was never very keen on the idea from the start, was only too happy to oblige. Take years off you. Make you feel like a teenager again. Cool. Don't know about a teenager. I'd be quite happy to feel like a 40-year-old again. <laughs> or even a 50-year-old. Right then, Alf. Oh, I'll, uh, I'd better get back. <coughs> Don't forget to have my shirt for tonight, will you, love? Tonight? The Murs do. Oh, that, yeah. Listen, stop worrying. Everything's going to be all right. You... Yeah, anyway, I'd better get back. I'll be back about five, then, because we need to be away not later than six. Mm. Ta-da. That's all right. Oh. Will you have somewhere as well, eh? It's exciting having somewhere special to go for once. Just hope my shoes don't start pinching, though, because you're on your feet at these do's all the time, you know. Well, that's you done, anyway. Uh, look, give you a magazine to read. I'll make you a nice cup of tea when I get back. Why? Where are you going? I've just got to pop and see our girl. That's got to be on for at least 20 minutes. I'll oh. be back before then. OK. Right. Make yourself comfy, yeah. all right? Look, I'm sorry, Hilda. I don't know what you expect me to do. Well, I expect you to find her. That's what I expect you to do. My pin you went off long since. Yeah, well, where's she gone? She said something about a quick message to Gail, but that was nearly an hour ago. Oh, blimey. 
Wouldn't be surprised if all my hair doesn't fall out. Now, I'm sure there's nothing to worry about. Oh, no, well, it's not your flipping hair, is it? Ah. Oh, Hilda, I'm sorry, but it took longer than I thought. Alfie, what are you doing here? Well, Hilda phoned an SOS at shop, didn't she? Well, you didn't expect me to come running down the street like this, did you? You knew I'd come back, Hilda. Twenty minutes, you said. Me pinga went ages ago. Yeah, and I was right in the middle of serving a customer. Well, I'm very sorry, but our girl was taking Polly. I had to go and see how she was. Yeah, well, I'll be back at five o'clock. Don't forget my shirt, will no, you? No, no, Alfie, I won't forget your shirt. Well, come on. Get this washed off and I'll get you set. Oh, no. No, I've been messed about quite enough for one day, thank you very much. You can wash it off and I'll put my rollers in myself. I want to get back and have a rest before tonight. Give me palpitations as all this. Well, don't just sit there, Natrin. Come on upstairs. Well, I'm sorry, but this is exactly the same as it was yesterday. What are you insinuating? That I've been mucking about with it or somewhat? As Rommel there is my witness, this is all your handiwork. Excuse me, Mrs Ogden, but these dyes are very complicated. Now, if you've used someone that's reacted... Oh, I see. It's all my fault, is it? <laughs> well, I beg your pardon. So, larding all that tripe on and leaving me sat there for goodness knows how long, that was all by the way, was it? You see, if your scalp is in a poor condition, if your roots are all sorts of brittle... Oh, no. No, I'm not having that. My hair's always been in first-class condition. Washed every Friday and rolled every blessed night. You see, Mrs Ogden, if you and Percy the Pest are out to make a federal case from this, I'm afraid you've got no chance. Oh, haven't we? Well, we'll see. Strikes me you think you can run right with these dyes of yours. I reckon it's a job lot you got cheap. Stuff they use on carpets, I shouldn't wonder. Well, I was going to offer you a free appointment, but if you're going to take that tone... Oh, yes. Well, I reckon a free appointment's the least I'm entitled to. Oh, well, that's all right, then. Right, now I'm at your disposal. Any time to suit you. How does tonight suit? Tonight, 7.30, I've just got to go out on council business so I can have a really good bash at getting it shaded down a bit. Shaded down? That's no good. I want it putting back to normal. Oh, well, I'm afraid that's going to take quite a while, Hilda. I mean, one appointment's not going to do that. It's got to be sort of coaxed. Well, I'll be straight with you. I know me rights. If it takes a thousand appointments, not another penny am I paying. <coughs> Go on through. Oh, thank you. What are you doing here? I could ask you the same question. Uh, Councillor Roberts has come to have a discussion about the, uh, the accident to me hair. That was no accident. It was sheer incompetence. Look, I've not come to talk to him. I've come here to have a private discussion with you, personal, Hilda. I'm Mrs Ogden's friend and advisor. Am I right, Mrs Ogden? Well, uh, yes, sir. Uh, as you know, Mr Sugden has been of some assistance to me in this matter. It's highly upsetting matter, am I right? Yes. So anything you have to say to Mrs Ogden, Councillor, it'd be better said in front of me. That's if you don't mind, Councillor He's Roberts. not in a position to mind. A man in his position, guilty by association, I think that's what you'll find a little word in it. <sighs> what have come about, Hilda? It, well, I think you'll agree that this business has gone on long enough. It'll go on till Mrs Ogden gets proper compensation, am I right, Mrs Ogden? Hmm. Well, there's been an, enough bad blood about this already, so, well, Audrey is prepared to have a look at your hair with the right to putting the uh, difficulty right. That's not compensation on your bike. Look, if you'll just shut up for a second... Look, I think we ought to hear what Councillor Roberts has got to say, Mr Subden. Well, not much, if that's an example of it. Uh, go on, Councillor Roberts. <coughs> well, um, about compensation for... Uh... Humiliation and deep mental distress resulting. <sighs> for the... Uh... Inconvenience it's caused you, Hilda. Well, now, um, Audrey is prepared to offer you a cash Wait settlement for it. of... £20. Not enough. Well, hang on a minute, Mr Sugden. After all, it is me what's the injured party. I couldn't agree with you more, Hilda. Although I, uh, I do agree with Mr Sugden that uh, £20 isn't very much these days. Uh, not for all I've gone through and suffered. It's peanuts. Well, 25 Done. Oh. If you did take him to court, you'd have got hundreds, thousands. And you will agree to uh, allow Audrey to have a look at your hair? Yes. Yes. Well, that's uh, £25, then, in full and fair settlement. On one condition. Condition? That your missus can put my hair back to normal. Uh, yeah, yeah, all right. I'm a witness to that. And when shall I tell Audrey to expect you? Oh, uh, three o'clock this afternoon. Three o'clock. And uh, don't bring your midget barrack room lawyer with you. You're making a big mistake, Mrs Ogden. You could have taken him and his missus to the cleaners. Twenty-five quid's nothing. Nothing. Hmm. Maybe I could. Maybe I couldn't. But there's one thing I've learnt in this life. Folk like me take what they can, when they can. Jam tomorrow's for the politicians. And there's another thing. 
Time I got myself back in full circulation again. There'll be some folk thinking I've popped off. What colour is it? I think you'll be agreeably surprised. Yeah, well, if I'm not, I'm going straight to my solicitor and you can have your £25 back. £25? I thought... What? No, nothing. <clears throat> right, are you ready? Yeah, as ready as I'll ever be. <laughs> Ta-da! You see, it has worked. You're back to normal. Oh, I'm my old self again. I told you. You sure my hair was this colour? Positive, Hilda. It looks a bit dreary. Oh, come on, make your mind up. I can soon make you a bottle blonde if that's what you want. How about blue? Hilda, you're brown. And honestly, I think that's the colour what suits you best. Yeah, I dare say you're right. I've always been your plain tablecloth, never your damask. <laughs> It isn't, is it? It is. It's Hilda. Do you know, I've forgotten what you look like. Very nice too, if I might say so. Mm, thank you. Well, that's it then. Nothing broken, as they say. But if I was you, I'd be a lot more careful in future. I mean, the next Belisha Beacon what walks out of here might not be as easy going as me. Could sue you for every penny you've got. Well, like Elsie Tanner would have done, for instance. <laughs> like to have seen her with an orange bounce. <laughs> thank you, Hilda. <laughs> I don't know what all the panic was about, I asked myself, as Hilda said, no harm done. Uh, not for the want of trying. Do you know, Alf, I'm seeing a side of you that I didn't know existed and I don't really like it. I mean, you don't just harbour a grudge. You keep it warm, you feed it and you cherish it. Look, you don't seem to realise what a narrow escape we've had because of your fecklessness. My what? It could have cost me a fortune. Oh, I doubt that, Alf. I doubt it very much. I don't see anybody ever parting you from your brass. You'll love it too much. You must do if you could do Hilda Ogden out of a measly 25 quid. Well, it's a good job one of us has got a business brain anyway. And talking about business, I think it'd be a very good idea to, to close this place. Gladly, Alfred, dear. Split ends have never exactly fascinated me. Though I can think of a lot of other things what do. Alf had been a councillor for Weatherfield for many years and it was election time again. The campaigning had been a bit of a strain for him and the results came as a shock and a disappointment. Here are the results of the election of councillor for the Weatherfield North Ward. I, the undersigned, the deputy returning officer at this election, hereby give notice that the number of votes recorded for each candidate is as follows. Get on with it. Andrews, Geoffrey Allen, 453. Barlow, Deirdre, 811. Six Labour. Pearson, Frank, 779. We've got it. Proudfoot, Mark, 502. You're in. Roberts, Alfred Sidney, 804. <laughs> A seven majority. Seven Gary rotten, Robert. lousy, stinking votes. Hold me hand up, Alf. I reckon at the death it come down to crime here, Street. No, no, lad. It's closer to home than that. Never mind. There was always next time. I mean, I tried to win Miss Skegness five years running. Aye, there's always the river. Anyway, I'll see you, Henry. Come on, love. It's all over by the shouting. I thought you even get a loser's medal. Oh, what are you talking about? Look, excuse me, my wife's not fitting <laughs> think it don't because I'm not here to crow. What are you for? Well, for starters, to say how sorry I am. Sorry? Who for? Me? No, oh, of course not. I'm not sorry for winning last night either. I'm just sorry that it's caused so much bad blood between us because honestly, as God is my judge, that is the last thing I wanted to happen. Yeah, well, water under the bridge now, isn't it? There was uh, just something else as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're having a bit of a do at the Rovers tonight. I just wondered if you and Audrey would like to come. Yes, of course we would. Why not? Oh, good. Oh, that's great. 
Right, see you about half seven, OK? Yeah, we'll be there. Bye. So now. Well, you might be there, love, but I most certainly will not. We'll both be there, Alfie. Oh, come on, love. Oh, come on, nothing. Alfie, going. I'll tell you why we're going and all, because I'm not having that lot out there going around saying we're bad losers. After what they've done to me, do you think I really care what they say behind me back? Well, I care. I'll tell you why I care and all, because win or lose, love, life goes on, doesn't it? And whether you like it or not, we're going to be stuck with this lot around here for the next 20-odd years. Well, I don't want to go. What do you think I do? God, what's one thing got to do with it? It's going to choke me to go, you know. But I'll be there, right? I'll be there with my best frock on, big smile on my face. So will you, Alf, right? Well, I'm not sure about the frock. <laughs> No, I mean, um, it's just for one more thing I wanted to explain, in case it got back, like, you know, and, and well, it sort of misunderstood, as it were, only, um, well, I, I, I actually voted for Alf. Well, that's what our system's all about, isn't it, Mavis? I mean, we do all have the democratic vote, the right to vote for whoever we think is best suited for the job. Oh, yes, I know, well, I mean, oh, sorry. Um, well, uh, that's really what I wanted to explain. I mean, just because I voted for Alf, well, it doesn't necessarily mean that I do think that he's best suited for the job, if you see what I mean. No, I'm, I'm not really sure if I do, maybe. Oh, well, like, what, what, what I'm really wanting to say is... Um, oh, sorry. Um, well, it all boils down to fear, really, doesn't it? Fear? Yes, of, of change. I mean, I've got this very deep-rooted fear of change and I was I, I was standing there in the actual voting booth and, and my mind was still churning and well in the end I sort of compromised really and I cast my vote for Alf. I'd quite right to Mavis, I mean if that was what you thought was the right thing to do. You really don't mind? Of course I don't. Oh good, <laughs> because just off the record did we had much rather you won anyway. They're never still going strong, are they? Good for another hour, I'd say. My God. Them were the days, eh, when we had stamina like that. Speak for yourself, you. That's <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, I love it.
fuck on him. Come on. He's trying to tell me, you know, Reed. He did. Come on. Down at the pub. No, no, no. I just wouldn't listen. Now, listen. I mean, I should have listened. Audrey. He's down at the hospital. He's going to be all right. I just thought he'd fallen over. He is. Now, don't get like that, love. Al's going to need all the help he can get. Could you clear a way through, please? What's wrong with him, Al? But, oh, it doesn't look good to me. That's it, Tilda. Let's all look on the bright side, eh? Audrey, would you like me to come with you in the ambulance? Uh, just the wife, please, love, if you don't mind. Well, in that case, I'll see you down there. All right, love. Come on. Yeah, all right. Come on, love, I'll run you down in the car. What, after the skinful you've had tonight? All right, let's get a taxi then. Good minute, love. Thank you. Mrs. Roberts. No, thank you. Sorry. Uh, shall I wait outside? Yeah, all right. You all right? Yeah, I'll be all right. See you later. How is he? Has he seen a doctor yet? Mm. They're, they're in there with him now. Hey, he's going to be all right. Do you hear me? Thanks for coming. I don't know what I'm going to do, Rita. <laughs> uh, now, he's not. Now, you can stop that sort of silly talk straight away. I'm sorry. Oh, I've lost my hang you now. Now then, the bad news is that he does seem to have had some sort of heart attack. Oh, no. The good news is that it was only a mild one. Does that mean he's going to be all right? Well, we do need to hang on to him for a few days, of course, just to make sure. But on the evidence available at the moment, I can see no reason why not. Oh, thank God. C can I see him now, then? Of course. Happily, Alf did make a full recovery, but he had to admit it had changed his life. Audrey thought that now would be a good time to get Alf to retire and move to a nicer house. Alf was a hard man to budge, but Audrey was capable of a sustained assault. You needn't stand there playing silly beggars, cos I know you've got money put yeah, away. You mean you wish I had? I know you have. All right, I've got my book away. Hard-earned savings for a rainy day. Oh. Enough stashed away for a wet week in Monte Carlo. So don't give me all that flannel, cos I know exactly what you've got. Oh, but you don't. Yes, I do. I've seen your building society books, which you thought you got hidden oh so sly. And that big cardboard box at the bottom of the wardrobe underneath your old Hank Johnson books. You've been rummaging. You've been rooting through my private things. You had no right to do that, I Audrey. had every right, because at the time I was searching for them books, I thought I was going to be a widow any minute. Hey. 
when you had the heart attack that time. They took you to hospital. Oh, well, that is charming, isn't it? I'm in, in hospital fighting for my life and you're ransacking the house to see how rich you're going to be. I didn't even know if I was going to have enough for a decent funeral because you're oh. all so secretive. So don't stand there telling your lies and saying we can't afford a decent place to live. Now, look here, Audrey. Alfie, what is the point of being the richest man in the cemetery, huh? You want to get it spent before you drop off your perch. Which won't be long from the way you're tucking into that grub. Alma! Oh, hi, do you know, I thought I'd come to the wrong house after you saying you were stopping in all day. Well, I was, but then Dawn Prescott said we could go and loot round them new flats that have just been released. Alma! You should see the one we're having. Honestly, it's got the most gorgeous view. And there's one of them big sliding patio windows with a little balcony. Oh, so you know which one you're getting then? Well, no, not big side and seal, but I mean, we've got first refusal. It's right on the corner, it is. So we've got a big extra window and all. Oh, what? I can't wait to tell Alfie. Alfie, oh, Alfie, you should have come with me, honestly. I've just seen that flat that we fancied on the plan and it's every bit as good as I thought yeah, it just would Just a minute, be. love. That was Mrs. Hatherton. Oh, she wants uh, a large brown loaf oh, and a small tin of salmon on all that. Right. Tea, don't let it go cold. Oh, do you know, from what Audrey's been saying, it certainly sounds very nice. Oh, I'm sure it's just for them that can afford it. Now, don't start all that. Of course we can afford it. Oh, you should go and see it. Do you know, it's the best flat in the development. We'll make it so much nicer than Mike bought it. <laughs> now, Dawn says you can pop round any time. Yeah, well, Dawn's going to have a long wait then, isn't she? Whoa, she can't keep Keep it forever, you know. Look, until we've sold our place, you can forget it. We'll sell it. Don't fret. You know, I've got a feeling we're going to be lucky. <laughs> lucky? Yeah. Moving into a flat that's smaller than the place we've got, that's going to take nearly every penny we've got, that we're going to have to work every hour God sends to pay for. You call that lucky? Come on, Alma. I'll make you a cup of tea back at home. Do you know, there are times when being married to Alf is about as exciting as watching bread go moulder. Mm. Goodbye, Alf. Oh, see ya. Goodbye, sir. You should go and see it, you know. Look, don't you start. But she's right. If you do sell your house... Yeah, well, I'll cross that bridge when I come to it just now and bother about Mrs Atherton's order. Yeah? Hi. Listen, sorry just to drop in on you like this, but uh, we just seen your house in the estate agent's window. I was wondering if we could have a wee look around. Have you spoken to the estate agent? Well, no, we haven't. They were closed, or we would have made an appointment. Look, if it's not convenient. Yeah, of course it is. Come on. Come on, now you go. Hey, now, look, if you're going to tell me I've been teasing on the table for ten minutes, I've been trying to lock this place up for the last twenty it minutes. It isn't. What's the panic, then? I've just had some people come look round the house. You what? They saw it in the estate agent's window, so they came on spec. Yeah, well, there's always some, isn't there? Some what? People who like to nose around other people's property. You made them a cup of tea, did you? Made them feel homely. They're not like that, Alfie. These were genuine. Genuine? What makes you think that? They want it. They're going to have it, Alfie. Eh? It's just what they're looking for. And they're just what we're looking for. He's in the army, so they've nothing to sell. Oh. And they're quite happy to pay the asking price on here and off. They sold their house to Jim and Liz MacDonald and moved into the accommodation above the shop until they found a new house. Alf looked at the figures and decided that they really couldn't afford the new flat that Audrey was so keen on, so she reluctantly agreed to settle for a semi. After a short stay above the corner shop, they finally bought a house in Grasmere Drive. Alf warmed to the whole idea when he discovered that the vendors were prepared to accept £3,000 less than the asking price. Election time came around again and Alf felt up to standing once more. This time he had help. Alec Gilroy volunteered to be his campaign manager, and with help like that, how could he lose? Excuse me. Oh, Jack, my trusty messenger, what news? Let's yeah. have a look at him. Oh, there we are. Oh, well, they're not too bad. Oh, no, 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 I think that makes a statement. Oh, yes, I think it says it all, love. Alf Roberts, the people's theme. You are. Eh? Hey? Duckworth! Where is he? The People's Fiend. Well, that's it, isn't it? I'm lost. Listen, I won't be out of the shop for more than an hour and a half. And that's your only appointment all day? Yeah, I promise it? it is, yeah. And if the, if the Gazette ring when I'm out, just tell them I'm out. <laughs> well, I'm hardly likely to tell them you're in, No, am no. I? I mean, don't tell them what I'm doing, love. Oh, why? What's that, then? Oh, huh? 
Pamela. Oh, hello. I said, what's that then, Alfie? Yeah, well, we'll discuss it later. Oh, anybody think you were on the Jimmy Young show instead of local radio? Oh, is Alf going on the wireless? Mm. Yeah, what can I get you, Emily? Just a box of matches, please. Is that all? Well, if it's too much trouble, I'll go to the cabin. Take no notice, Emily. It's his age. Yeah. When's Deirdre on, then? It'll be her turn next, won't it? I don't think she's been asked. Maybe I'd better give them a ring. No, no. All no. candidates are supposed to get equal air time. Yeah, but you see, Audrey's giving you the wrong details, you see. It's nothing to do with politics at all. It's about me being the president of the local trading association, you see. So uh, it's got nothing to do with Deirdre. Well, I must say, it seems rather a coincidence, being on the wireless just at the same time as the run-up to the election. Mm, it does, doesn't it? Will you keep out of this, Audrey? Uh, look, it's, it's a programme about groceries, Ooh. the grocery trade. <laughs> Sounds thrilling, that. Yeah, I mean, if, if Deirdre did if, happen to be the, the manager of Better Buys, you see, well, then she would have the right of reply in about a fortnight's time. But the election will be over by then. Yes, but I keep telling you, it's not about the election. It's, it's nothing to do with that. It's to do, it's to do with the grocery trade, that's all, you see. Yeah, so. She comes in here, doesn't she? She Deirdre? could give the consumers angle. Yeah, I mean, she used to work here, actually. I'm not going on the programme to get votes, you know. If you say so, Mr Roberts. Goodbye. Bye, Emily. Thank you very much. What did you say all that for? Well, how would I know you're up to so much? I'm not up to anything. Look, what it is, the vice president of Wart just happens to be a pal of the bloke at the radio station. Now, do you understand? Mm. And that's why I don't want it broadcasting. I thought that was the whole point of radio. <laughs> Today's distinguished guest is the president of the Weatherfield Association of Retail Traders, Mr Alf Roberts. Good afternoon, Alf, and welcome to the programme. Delighted to be here, Greg. First of all, Alf, how long have you been in the retail trade? Man and boy? Oh, no, no, no. As a matter of fact, I came into it rather late, you know. My first calling was the post office, so I came in uh, late in life, so to speak. So give us some idea of the size of your emporium. Come again. Well, how many employees? Hey, Audrey. Oh, just all the sausage rolls, please. Don't serve it's me and my an It's a, a, a mini market. You know, it's a general provisions and off license in Coronation Street, off Rosamond Street. Well, tell us about your customers, Alf. Oh, they come in all shapes and sizes. I presume, in that respect, you're no different to any of the big supermarkets, then. Uh, well, we like to think that we do give a better service. He can than talk. Eh? The supermarkets tend to ignore, neglect. There are those I call the forgotten folk. The forgotten folk. Tell us about them. Well, I'm thinking of the, the old and the lonely. Some of them have very sad lives, you know. They come in and they ask for maybe a, a box of matches or a, a sausage roll. And really, all they want is, is somebody to talk to, just some company. So your customers are happy to pay slightly higher prices in return for personal attention? Is that all you that, wanted, was it? A sausage? That's something of a myth, you know. No, like prices. five pound of potato, Wait, two loaves of bread, one tin of beans, costs. one tin of carrots and four well, cans of lager. some of these lager. big places are, are way out of town. Well, hang on a second. I think we've got our first caller coming through on the line. Uh, hi, who's calling? Jacko, what's the time? Uh, Get that radio quick. Right. Make sure there's a taping because he wants it recording. Scotch and soda. I told you not to forget the time. You've got to play me watch, have you? Why is everything my fault? Yes, but you know, we can always provide that extra service for the small customer. And that's where we'll always beat the big stores hands down. My local corner shop is plenty of time oh, to well. talk. Well, press that button, oh, give me strength. He hardly gets any customers. Folk can't afford his prices and most of his veg is rotten. Oh, but this has got nothing to do with Mr. Roberts' shop. Dead right, it hasn't. Comes I bet a pound to a penny she's never set foot uh, in my shop for Keep an eye on my drink, will you? Better she think of left my wallet in your car. Mm. Is it prime condition? So keep those calls coming in on 715-2222. There's a caller on the line now. Hello, what's your name? Mr Owens. What's your question, Mr Owens? Yes, I'd like to know what Mr Roberts' attitude is to Sunday trading. Ah, well, it's a tricky one, is that? You see, you've got to weigh the obligations to the small customer against the family needs of the shopkeeper. I mean, we all need time with our families, don't we? Yes, I appreciate that. Uh, by the way, am I speaking to the same Mr Alf Roberts? Who is standing for councillor? You are. The one and the same. 
And is that the same Mr. Alf Roberts that makes deliveries down Nightingale Lane late at night? He what? Yes, well, you see, I was just wondering whether his obligation to the small customer extended to the large customer as well. Does the name Mrs. Barford ring a bell? I think she's a customer of his, isn't she? Is that what Mr. Roberts means by personal service? And him a family man too. I think it's a disgrace. Al? Oh, right. Uh, well, that's it for Shop Talk for this week. It's now 2.40 and time for some of this. Well, what was that all about then? Well, what do you think? Half's been playing away, ain't it? No, the old Tom. Eh? How long's this been going on for? Listen, it's the first time I've heard of it. You know, I didn't think he had it in him. <sighs> You're not the only one. Vivian Bloomin' Barford, I'll kill the pair of them. Do you know her then? Oh, yeah, she's very big in wart. She's very big all over. <laughs> I'll give him personal services. Listen, Audrey, you haven't taken from my groceries. Just take it, Jim. It's on the house. Take the whole blessed lot for all I care. Thanks very much, love. And him a family man, too. It's a disaster. We're doomed, Bet. You, you, you realise that, don't you? Here's me worked all my life for the good of others to be stabbed in the back by Fatty Arbuckle. Are you sure you knew not about it? Well, of course I didn't. Comes in here for a, a couple of pints, a bag of port scratchings. I mean, I thought he was straight back to Grasmere Drive to watch news at ten with a mug of cocoa. Instead of which, it turns out he's a flaming sex maniac cruising the back streets in his Montego. And I'm telling you, it's a disaster. Uh, well, put like that. Put like put anyway. <laughs> like I say, I mean, uh, I'm brought minded. <laughs> That's something, yeah. Listen, but not in the context of winning this election. I'm not. Of course, you know what's going to happen, don't you? Eh? Deidre is going to get back in before we know where we are. She'll be on the planning committee, just as Phil Jennings' application goes in for that graffiti Come club. Uh, we can kiss goodbye to this place then, can't we? Oh, he better have a good explanation because, by God, he's going to need one. I think you've just took the words right out of somebody else's mouth. If you just listen for one minute, there's a perfectly innocent explanation. I very much doubt that, Alf. Oh. When Desmond Barford and me were at school, we were great pals. We were great muckers. So, when he was took, naturally, she turned to me as if he was, well, like his brother-like. Oh, well, it's funny you never mentioned anything about this at the time, Alf. I'd never even heard of Desmond Barford. Mind you, I'd have never heard of these late-night deliveries if I hadn't tuned into the radio, along with 50,000 other people, Alf. I mean, how do you think I feel? Look, just because people have got suspicious minds, you can't lay that at my door. Oh. Oh, so it was all fabrication, was it? I just gave her the odd lift back from the wart meetings. Just the odd occasion. Odd, yes, I'll say it's odd. But you know what I think is very odd, Alf? That you never mentioned a word about it. Which strikes me that you have got something to be guilty about, hmm? Well, good luck to you. You can now put your money where your mouth is. And what's that supposed to mean? I am going home. I shall leave you to tend to the needs of your forgotten folk, right? I've got better things to do. Look, Audrey! We, we, uh, yes, love, what can I get for you? A box of matches. Now then, Alf. What are you up tonight, then? Hell, I'm back, I dare say. Oh, give over. Tell you what, you've got up in my boot, you know? Never had you down as a cousin over. Ah, I spoiled everything, you see. I mean, the election, my marriage, it's all a misunderstanding. Rubbish. It'll have done wonders for your image, this. Absolutely. Sex and politics go together, don't they? I mean, look, look you, you've got your, your Lloyd George, your, your Cecil Parkinson, Rasputin, never stop them. Rasputin? Listen, chin up, pal. Things could be worse, son. Do you think you're playing? I could ask the same of you. You have glued, glued a poster on the outside of my window. Have you gone mad? Look, can we go? Go? The fun's just about to start. Oh, it's no fun for me. What, your two favourite people about to knock cobs off each other? What's wrong with you? <laughs> just wetting his whistle, you know. Tell you what, we'll have a picture. Man of the people supping a pint. Did you say Mrs Barlow was in there? Oh, aye. They're both in there. Well, what are we waiting for? 
You swore you wouldn't. Oh, no, I did not. And I can stick whatever I like in that window, and you have no right to paste over it and block my light. Block your light? Ridiculous. Look, I, my post is exactly the same size as yours. How would they block your light anymore? I want it down. I want it down well, now. I'm very sorry oh, for look, you. you must have had a ladder to get it up there. You can just go and get that ladder and take it I've down. I've got better things to do with my light. Oh, plan. have you? Yes, now, I'm telling you. you yeah, but I want the... it down. You're blocking my light. I'll do more than block your oh, light. Oh, will you? The... Yes, don't you shut up. Ladder, gentlemen. Gentlemen. Not quite the dog with two tails, but by heck, it'll do. So you'll not be back at all, then? Well, I'll pop in from time to time, like. In other words, no. Oh, Audrey, on a day like today. How... Well, now, how's the people's champion today? Well, not too bad, you know. Well, it's the people's champion's wife that's got the sticky hand of this eye, like working in here all day. Uh, well, I just wanted to wish you luck and say that... Uh... You know where I am if you need me. Oh, well, you could do a bit of driving backwards and forwards, you know. You could take some of the old folk down to the polling station. Oh, yes. Well, uh, I mean, what if they vote for some of the others? Well, that's the chance you have to take. Of course they will, you know. Eh? Oh, well, a lot of them old beggars will take a lift off you and then vote for it to the side just for devilment. Mm. No, I think they're best left where they are. Well, myself. hello, Alfred. Vivian, good morning. What a surprise. <laughs> Mrs. Roberts. Mrs. Barford, I haven't seen you for a while. No, I, I've been ever so busy. But I thought, well, I can't leave him on his own on election day. So, here I am. My car's outside and we're both at your service. The answer to a prayer. I gather you were mentioned on the radio to the day. What, me? Uh, just a misunderstanding, love. I'll tell you about it later. Anyway, we'd better get off. I'll see you later, love. I hope to ride on your shoulders, Alf. Yeah, well, I'll do the best I can, you know. <laughs> Big woman, isn't she? Yeah, yeah. Get her and Alf on the same platform, we could have a political landslide. <laughs> <laughs> Edward James Andrews, 284. Susan Bedell, 37. Yeah. Deirdre Ann Ball, 904. Sylvia Jessup, 284. <laughs> Thomas David Kiernan, 289. <laughs> Alfred Sidney Roberts, 1,515. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would just like to say thank you to all those Please. loyal helpers who once again return. What do you think you're doing? All it's those. Joey. Oh, oh, oh. I don't know I can do it. Oh, I'd just like to say thank you. Thank you. Audrey! A councillor again, firmly established in their new house and business not bad. Things were looking up for the Robertses. Christmas came around again and something happened which was to give both of them a nasty shock. It all started because Percy criticised Alf's Christmas puddings. So Alf ate one himself just to prove him wrong. That evening, he and Audrey were going to a do organised by the Warts, that's the Weatherfield Association of Retail Traders, and Alf overdid it a little with the food. Soccer video game for Nicker. Uh. Huh? A lovely doll for Sarah Louise. Um, oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. What's that? Uh, just a little something for me. You've got umpteen handbags already. What do you want another one for? It's not a handbag, Alf. It's a clutch bag. Of course, it won't go with anything I've got, but uh, perhaps I'll find a little something in the sale there. Oh, come on, it's no use you touching. I've saved you from traipsing round the shops, haven't I? You know how much you hate that. Oh, yes, you'll martyr yourself for me to go shopping. But you won't go to Christmas do for warts, will you? Yes, well, if you keep pulling a face like that, I certainly won't. Yeah, well, you said you weren't. Well, I don't know, when I was shopping, I don't know, with all the decorations and that, I thought, well, it is Christmas, the season of goodwill, I should go. Yeah. Even if they are a lot of boring old shocking. Look, I don't want you mithering all night. Do you want me to come or not? Yeah, go on then. Right. <clears throat> you can have your present then. Oh. Ta-da! 
It's a cummerbund. I know what it is. It's a bit garish in there. Oh, it? come on, Alfie. Live a little. Cut a bit of a dash for once. Well, I could always put it in for auction for charity, can't I? Oh, now. What's this I found? <gasps> well, it's a good job I saw this, isn't it, eh? Perfect match for my new little clutch bag. <laughs> now stop it. It's too tight. Just in test you want to. Stretch fabric. <laughs> You've eaten too much, that's all. I mean, I said you should have had the fish. Now, what did I say? <sighs> oh, don't go on about it. Well, I did say it, didn't I? Christmas, you don't come to a duel like this and starve. It's not these prices. Well, it's for charity, you keep saying. Testing, testing. Oh. One, two, and you're three. not having any pudding One, two, either. Two, well, I can have two. a bit. Oh, Alf, you've just been complaining that you've eaten too can much. You? I have not. It's this blooming thing. It's come up on. Oh, I'm really? too tight. I'm taking it off. Not for me. Oh, thank you. Oh. Go on, then. Kill yourself. Eat yourself to death. See if I can. Thank you. But if you do eat that and you're up all night, don't come whining to me. Will you keep your voice down? Oh, I shouldn't have come. I mean, you're hopeless. Oh, oh, oh. Ow. oh. Elf? Oh. God, oh. Elf! Oh. Elf, please, he's having oh. a heart attack. Get an ambulance, get an ambulance, please! Oh. Elf, oh, it's awful. Come on. I said some terrible things to him again. Really terrible. Sort of thing. Well, when we sat at dinner, he was stuffing himself. I mean, the last thing I said, I mean, the last thing I said was, go on, kill yourself. You didn't mean it, Ralph. No, but it was the last thing I you said. You didn't mean it, and Alf, no, but you didn't But it was the last it. thing he heard. Oh, come on now. You're being soft. If anything happens to him, it should won't. I'll never forgive He's myself. It's going to be all right, Mum. Oh, because I love him. Of course I love him. I know you do. And Alf knows you do. Oh, I'm horrible to him. Now, you're just being soft. No, I am. I'm horrible. I mean, I'm always moaning and being sarcastic and spending his money. But, oh, dear, I don't know what I'll do with that. The doctor's <laughs> Mrs. Roberts. Where's Alf? I want to see him. He's sleeping. He's stable now and in no pain. The best thing that you can do is to go home. No. And get some rest. Was it a heart attack? No, no, I don't think so. Yes, of course it was. I was there. Mum. But as he's had one before, we want to keep him in for some tests tomorrow. We'll know more then. He was so poorly. I mean, he was dying. And there's something you're not telling me. No, no, I promise you. Yes, there is. There's something wrong. I know there is. Please, go home. Get some rest. Thank you, Doctor. Oh, just look after him, will you, please? Sit down. Oh, sit down. I'll go and ring for a taxi. Don't leave me, girl. Please, don't leave me. I'm just ringing for a taxi. Love you. Would you stay with me just tonight? Don't leave me on my own, just in case anything happens to him in the night. I won't leave you. I'll ring Martin from your house. Do you know if anything happens to him? By the time Audrey visited him the next day, she'd found out that Alf had eaten a whole Christmas pudding in the Rovers, just to prove a point. Now, Audrey is a lady of very little sympathy, and Alf had used it all up. So it was back to the Christmas shopping for Audrey. We had somewhere to eat. It's just a glass of milk. They're looking after you, the nurses. Oh, my. The wonderful. What's happened to him? Car's fresh. <gasps> oh, that reminds me. I brought you some. Oh, you shouldn't have bothered, Lord. What you got there? Look, give it here. Look, there's four watching. I had a visit from Percy Sugden. Look, put it away. Hide it. He said you like these. In fact, he said you could eat these all in one go. Is that right? I'm sorry. Yes, I did something very stupid. I know that. Mm. Well, I thought I'd bring it and show it to that doctor, the one that's doing all those tests on you to find out what's wrong. 
happens when he sees this? He'll get a better idea. Don't you dare. Give it here. <laughs> anyway, I can't stop long because there are only five and a half shopping days to Christmas and it looks like I've got to do it all on my own. Off! What are you doing with wallet? Look, all my credit cards are in there. Why no? Well, you're not going to need it in here, are you? Listen, I've still got a lot of shopping to do. The decorations, even more presents. Well, after that second scare, Alf and Audrey took a holiday at the seaside. Audrey had been pushing Alf to sell up and retire, but Alf was against it. But when they got back, Deirdre had some news for them that would change Alf's mind. Oh, we're busy. Hi, Deirdre. Oh, I'm not so excited. We've not been home yet. Look, I'm sorry about this. I've got some bad news for you. Oh, don't say we've been burgled again. I knew it every time. No, we... no, 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 it, it's nothing like that. It's Les Curry. He died last night. They took him into intensive care. Oh, I need and... to sit down. Yeah. Come on. Let me have that stool. Oh, lovely. Are you all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine, love. Yeah. It's just I thought he'd be all right, you know. You never know the hour, do you? No, you don't. Can I have a glass of water? Yeah, sir? I'll get it. Right. It was only my age, you know. I know. Anyway, that's it. I'm not going to go on working and drop dead in somebody else's shop. We'll sell up. We'll sell up, Audrey. We'll go live at the seaside, just you and me. Oh, oh I'm sorry it's taken something like this, but I'm so glad to hear you say that. Oh. Hey, blimey. <laughs> don't do that too often, love. I'm supposed to be watching my art. <laughs> Listen, don't go telling folk too early either. We'll just do it quietly. And they'll wake up one morning and we'll be gone. After an initial skirmish with Reg Holdsworth, Alf sold the shop to Brendan Scott, Reg's boss at Better Buys. There was a farewell party for them at the Rovers and they went off house hunting in Lytham St Anne's. That was when Audrey had second thoughts. All right, let's have it. Yeah, I'll go and put the kettle on. You'll do nothing till we get this sorted out. That meal cost best part of 50 quid. It was about as enjoyable as a funeral tea. Yeah, we've got to talk, Alf. Talk about what? Lytham. We've talked of nothing else but Lytham all night. You've talked of nothing else. When we're going to move, what we're going to do when we get there. Alf, love, I'm sorry. I know it was my idea about moving to Lytham. You're not saying you're having second thoughts. It's not going to work out. Of course it's going to work. No, it's not, love. Um, if we move to Lytham, if we move anywhere, I mean, we're going to be living out of each other's pockets. I mean, we'll be just like all them other retired folks we've come across. Tweedledum and Tweedledee, doing everything together. Eating, sleeping, living, breathing. I mean, it's how all the neighbours are going to see us. It's how they saw us at that bowling club the other week. It's how, what's it, Les and Norma saw us today. Well, that's what retirement's about, isn't it? Sharing everything. I mean, shared interests, shared friends. Yeah, but <laughs> we'd have no life of our own anymore, don't you see? I'm not ready for that, Alf. Not yet, anywhere. I don't believe I'm hearing this. It was you that was on about me retiring, selling the business, moving. Yes, I know. I know, Lord, and I'm sorry. I can't go through with it, Alf. I don't want to go. Well, it just happens to be a bit too late in the day for that. We're going and that's it. And the sooner you get used to the idea, the better. For all his bluster, Alf would do anything for Audrey. So to please her, he took the house off the market. But he also undid another piece of business. What's up with you? Alf? Oh, hello, love. Uh, I didn't sell it, you know. The house? No, well, uh, the shop came up first, you know, at the auction, like. It knocked down price, Audrey. I made a bundle. You didn't, did you? You have, haven't you? Oh, Alf. 
Audrey needn't have worried. She finally persuaded Alf to sell up for good, this time to Wretch Holdsworth. They continued to live in Grasmere Drive, and Alf carried on as councillor. It wasn't long before Audrey's dreams received another boost. Alf was made mayor for the second time, and Audrey became Lady Mayoress. It's all right, Alf. Uh, Brian, uh, Mr. Bowes says he'll keep an eye on them for them and then bring them... Oh, Alf. Sweetheart, you look terrific. Just terrific. Oh, do you know, I'd love to give you a lift home in the limo, but we've got another function. It's all right, ma'am. We've got the car. Oh, fine. Thanks for coming. I didn't think I was going to enjoy it at all, but I mean, it was smashing, wasn't it? Didn't Alfie look terrific? Hey? But we're off then, Alf, so... Oh, all right, man. Yeah, thanks for coming, anyway. See you later. Bye-bye, yeah. darling. Bye-bye, Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Do you know, Martin, we're very quiet. I hope they haven't had a round. Oh! Hello, Martin. Oh, watch your luck, like Alf. Hmm? Oh, oh, look. You've cracked some of them. You've got to throw me a gun. What are you doing, woman? <laughs> look, just leave it. Just leave it. Time he eats, he always drops some down. Will you just get in the car? Then? I want to get this stuff off and get my feet up for half an hour before we go on what to do tonight. So we're uh, home then, is it, Mrs. Roberts? Oh, yeah. Oh, Brian, I wonder if we could make a slight detour. Stick us another in there, would you bet? Oh, yeah, that was sharp. It's been one of them days. Oh, I've not stopped since Audrey came in for a complete overall this morning. She'll be just about over by now, won't I? I wonder how she went on. Need you ask? She'll have been in her element. New frock, chauffeured limo, picture in the paper. Well, I can just see her playing Lady Bountiful. <laughs> oh, just look at that. Oh, look, it's just something in like Audrey. <gasps> Audrey! Oh, you must be on the way back from the mermaid. Oh, how exciting. Exciting? What's exciting about that? Alf Roberts and his wife in a vehicle is costing this bill and I own £30,000 a year maintenance. Oh, look, they've stopped. Oh, let's go and have a look at them, Mr. Sugden. They're all dressed up. Go on, sound it again. Why we had to come this way, I don't know. Because I wanted to, that's why. Yeah, now you've got us stuck here, yeah. Give him another blast, we'll be here all day otherwise. Maybe we should just back up. No, I'm not backing the Merse car anywhere for Reg Oldsworth. Right. I'll go and have a quiet word then. Yeah, well, if he gives you any aggro, let me know. I'll sort him out. Maybe we should have backed up. Yeah, maybe we shouldn't have come this way in the first place. And why Oldsworth needs a delivery at this time of the day, I don't know. He'd be left over his buying cheap knowing him. Oh, it's right. oh. Oh, oh, that's all we need. A crowd. Audrey, in her new position of Lady Mayoress, became irresistible to an old crony of Alf's, Fred Elliot. Audrey, on the other hand, found Fred very resistible. When Alf led a group of businessmen on a goodwill exercise to twin Weatherfield with Charleville, Fred wasn't one to miss an opportunity. <laughs> Look, will you give up fussing? Uh, right, lads, I would like to have a word before we go in for the uh, grand procession. Now, we're here as ambassadors of Weatherfield and also of Great Britain. Our black puddings can hold their heads up anywhere, and so can we. So walk tall, lads, walk tall. Oh, one short. Where's Fred Elliot? What does he look like in that hat? <gasps> oh, I don't know, all this palaver, all this pumping around, it drives me down. Well, you have it to do, love, in public life. Yes, I know, but I mean, all this palaver, all this will you be upstanding and so forth. I'd much rather go and look round the shops. Yeah, I bet you'll find some lingerie and that round oh. here. French stuff. Oh. Yes, it is. Oh, yes. Fine looking woman, Audrey. Oh, Fred, thank you. Well, it's nice when somebody notices. 
I'd like to treat you to something in the Landry line. You know, you know, as, 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 a, as a little token of esteem, like, from me to you. I mean, would you let me treat you? And then perhaps sometimes you could show me what you've bought, but eh? Come on, now, don't be naughty. Put your money away. Wouldn't look right, would it, huh? Hey, come on, friend lad, you're holding it up. We're going to be late for the procession. Oh, <laughs> yes, come on, Fred, now it's high time that you were upstanding for his worship. Fred wasn't that easily rebuffed, and then Audrey made the mistake of asking him to help her at an opening, just to show off that she, as the Lady Mayoress, could be independent. She then had the devil's own job shaking him off. Oh. If only you hadn't cut your blasted finger. He'd have known you'd been. I thought that was point. Well, yes. It's just... I didn't want to be caught in the act. Talking of the act, there's a little flat over my shop, unoccupied at present. And I have been a good boy. Haven't I been a good boy? Yes, well, the thing is, Fred, you see, I may want you to be a good boy again. I mean, if it takes more than today for Alfie to see sense about the Lord Lieutenant's do. Well, if I'm expected to do it again, I might want a bit of special encouragement, mightn't I? Well, let's see if next time you can do it without being late, eh? Because I only reward perfect performances, Fred. And you came so close. You see? Until the next time. Oh, whatever's the matter up? Uh, if that's a telephone bill, it's not to do with me. Do you know, I swear that computer just plucks figures from out the air. Oh, Alf. Huh. Oh. Now, listen, don't breathe a word about this. Not today, it's fully official. Oh. Mm. You know, it's a month of Sunday since I saw you lost for words, eh? <laughs> Try and keep it that way, though. Don't go rushing your telephone, will you? <laughs> eh? Hmm? Now, think on. Yeah. Eey, I don't know. I'll it. <laughs> anyway. Before. No, but in my heart of hearts, Alma. Come on, sit down, Chuck. Look, what's going on? You've not so much as defrosted a pork chop for me tea. Oh, I wouldn't give the likes of you pork chops. No. So in for you, more like, eh? <laughs> Do you get it? So long. <laughs> Have you been talking? No, not a word has passed my lips. I mean, Gail is my witness. Oh, I am indeed. Yeah, right, well, come on, let's get going then. Oh, come on. Alfie, the whole blinking world's going to know soon. I mean, let us have a bit of fun telling them. It's not being confirmed yet, no, Audrey. No, these are friends, they're family. Come on, let us in on it. Oh, look at this man. I mean, to some of you, I know he's a figure of fun. And a lot of you mocked him when he were men, not understanding his true worth. Oh, come on, no, Audrey. Alf, it needs to be said. But other folks, wiser folks, have seen a man of dignity behind this mother's frame and from the highest level they have chosen to honor him and giving him the honor to which he is very well entitled and they made him pope oh, not quite mike he's an obe oh. <laughs> hey doesn't she mean sob oh, oh dear oh and the red green-eyed monster no no come on they haven't given him the obe yes they have what for? What's he ever done? She'll be giving it to us captains of industry. Not for them who are going for pomp and circumstance. Charity work. Oh, perhaps that's a word you've never heard before, Reg. Unstinting and unpaid for contributions to the social oh, welfare of others. Don't go on, Audrey, please. Well, perhaps the planning on giving you the order of the guards are better. It's all stuff and nonsense. Oh. <laughs> Liz? Oh, Liz? Do you hear that? Alf's got the old V.E. Hey! Oh! Uh, well, yeah, yeah, I'll penis another clear though. Oh, well. <laughs> I'll tell you what, that's the best of all day. Oh, oh, you're terrible, the pair of you. Come on, let's join in this well, celebration. Right. Hey, well done, Alf. 
There's not been a real celebration. Well, there should be. This is momentous. You've put Weatherfield and Black Pudding on the map. This should be marked by some champagne. Racco, oh. get out the bubbly. Oh, champagne! Yeah, I'd rather have said that and had a glass of coffee. Yeah. You're too modest, you. Honestly. Well, are you having champagne or what? Just a glass. Yeah. Right, and who's paying? Well, the man of the moment, of course. Oh. Who else? <laughs> <laughs> What's happened to you and your rotten earrings? Oh, keep over. We'd have got here in plenty of time if Donna put his foot down. Oh, hang on. I'm not Michael Schumacher, you oh, know. Well, you wouldn't have all right, to All right, all right, don't you. start. Look, we'll just have to go on the next train. Oh. Uh, excuse me, what time's the next train to London? Tomorrow morning. Thank you very much. They persuaded Don to drive them to London, and Audrey couldn't resist the opportunity to interfere in Don's life. Because of that particular piece of interference, Audrey missed Alf receiving his OBE. Nick's house. Look, there's a time and a place for this, Audrey. It's not here, and it's not now. But he won't talk to her. Whenever she tries, he digs his heels Because she keeps on saying the same thing, that's why. Get out of the house, Don. It's Nick's. Oh, well, if you won't respect your late wife's wishes, then there's no hope for you. That's all I can say. Right. Where are you going, Don? We don't need petrol. If I'm going to get a pocket seat. I want it to my face. Well, we're nearly there now. You and Gail had no time for Ida when she was alive. Actually, that's not true. But as soon as she died and wrote that flipping letter, she suddenly became a saint. Have you seen the time? Well, that's blasphemy. Oh, wishes to be obeyed and memories to be cherished. You're an hypocrite, Audrey. Oh, I don't have to sit here listening to this. Hey, 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 where are you going? And if you were half a man, you'd thump him, Alf Roberts. Goodness <laughs> sake. Hey, and another thing. Don't what kind of people that. would stop a fella seeing his own grandkids? Your grandkids? You haven't got the right to see them after what you did. What did I do? Go on. You drove Ivy to despair. That's what she did. I mean, why else do you think she went off? You better be careful what you say. No, look, this is silly. Just calm down. To the save parents. her face. That's yeah. why, because she couldn't stand the shame of all your carrying on. Oh, now you're making sense. If it's carrying on we're talking about, you're the expert, hey, aren't hey, you? Hey, hey, that's enough of that. You're always oh, swanning off and coming back when you felt like it. Mind you, you've covered enough ground, even on one leg. Right. That's it. I'm finished. I'm not having that woman in my cab. I don't want to go in your cab. I'd not go in your cab, even if hell had me. Right, you can have your fruit with that and all. Uh, you said a mouthful oh. there. Look, you better apologise. stupid. Apologise to him. Then. Well, if we... Here! Oh. Don't go here! Look, I've had it for miles, Alf. I've had it up to here. Audrey, get yourself back in this car now! It is oh. true what our girl said, Alf. I mean, you heard him. I tried to be peacemaker and I got a load of abuse. All right, come on. Well, when Alf got to London without Audrey, he needed someone to be with him, and he spotted Betty and her new husband, Billy Williams, in the crowd. He asked her to escort him, and when Audrey finally did turn up, she was not only appalled to have missed the ceremony, she was beside herself to discover that Betty had taken her place. She wasn't going to let Alf off with that. You engineered this, Alf <laughs> Robbins. You ditched me so she could get her face in. I didn't even know Betty was here. I saw you in the crowd, in the love? Oh, yes, he couldn't go in there by himself, that could he? I have never felt so humiliated. I mean, the greatest day of my life. Ruined. I'll never give you up. Never. Come on, now. Give us a deck or your medal, eh? Not just now, Robbie. I think we better go and have a little bit of lunch. I'll see you now. Oh, right. Sure, Robbie. Hey, bit of luck you're getting in the palace, wouldn't ah, it? Yeah. Do you speak to the Queen? Oh, yeah. Look, you never even got near. I mean, you wouldn't have seen anything if you had been there. Well, I wasn't, was I? I was stuck in a clapped up to old barn with a smelly great dog. Eh? Hey? I've, uh, I've got the car out. I'll find you ready. Get out of my sight, Don Brennan! Shout all you want to, Audrey, but I was fully justified... Now, just I... shut it, Don, because I'm shouting now. You've ruined my wife's day, did you know that? Me? Yeah, and if you think you're getting money for this trip, you can whistle for it. Well, I'll whistle so long, then. 
Because I'm going on, Mummy. That's right, you eh? Hey, hey! Hey, where are you going? Excuse me, he's not that good, though. May I take the boat up, please? What? I'll make sure. Please. Alf and Audrey will no doubt continue to misunderstand each other, but in reality, misunderstanding is only how it appears to outsiders. Those of us who know them well know that they need and love one another deeply. I hope you've enjoyed this insight into two characters who've earned a place in the hearts of all the fans of Coronation Street. I look forward to you joining me again when I next turn the spotlight on a specific corner of the street. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you.